Hey everyone, and welcome to day nine of Alex Lifeson Month here on my channel. Now, so far through the first eight days of this journey of mine, posting an Alex Lifeson related video every day for a month, there have been loads of very kind comments on each video, many of which that praise my playing and covering of these fantastic Alex Lifeson solos, which is extremely kind, so thank you very much for that. Uh, however, there are nearly just as many praising my guitar tone for each of these solos, so that will be the focus of today's video. How I manage to dial in Alex Lifeson's tone for each solo, and what is my core uh, preset setup for getting started on each each in Bias Effects 2 software. Now, as you may know, I'm a big fan of Positive Grid's Bias Effects 2 software, and no, they do not pay me. Uh, I wish they did, uh, as it's pretty much all I use. Uh, you know, I do have amps. Uh, I, you know, a pedal board full of pedals and microphones, so on and so forth. However, much of my playing and recording is done late at night in an apartment. So software and silence is pretty much the only way to go for me. So then within Bias Effects 2, I have my go-to Alex Lifeson preset that I made. And it's the first thing that I bring up to get started in dialing in one of his tones. Now, aside from effects, which Lifeson used uh, quite frequently, especially after the first few albums, his basic setup for many, many years had almost always been a guitar with humbuckers into a British, uh, uh, you know, stack style tube amplifier, like a Marshall or a High Watt, and or Fender Super or Twin Reverb amps for his cleaner tones. He would get rather boutique-y as the years went on. However, for much of his 70s and 80s output, his core setup remained the same. Humbucker into a Marshall-style amplifier. So then, let's pull up my signal chain in Bias FX2 and have a walk through it. Uh, and just as an aside, and despite the fact that I do have the elite version of Bias FX, I'm pretty sure that most of the amps and effects that I'm using here for Alex's tone can be found in the standard and also the pro version of Bias FX2 as well. But uh, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, regardless, let's bring it up on my computer and check it out. Good then, so here is my Bias FX2 signal chain and Alex Lifeson preset that I like to use as my, my core starting base for pretty much everything that I cover by Alex Lifeson and Rush, but uh, it is especially good for the early Rush tones from the 70s and 80s. And uh, like I already said, I'm pretty certain that all of these amp models and effects that I use in this core setup are available on the standard and the pro version of Bias FX2. And uh, first up in the signal chain, we have uh, a noise gate, uh, pretty essential and self-explanatory here. There are a couple of different ones within Bias effects too, but this is the one that I, I like in particular. Uh, next we have compression and uh, a drive boost pedal. Now I'll only have these two pedals on for soloing. Any rhythm playing that I do, I'll click both of these off. Uh, as far as compression goes, uh, I'm just worried about getting a touch more sustain while soloing. So I will boost the sustain here up to about uh, three o'clock and just leave everything else set at about noon. Uh, now this boost pedal is pretty much a modeler of the, the, uh, the famous Ibanez Tube Screamer. And like the compressor, I'll only kick this on for soloing. Uh, just for a, a bit of a boost, a bit of a volume boost, and a touch more gain. Now, with this pedal, the only parameter that I really touch on a regular basis is this tone knob here. I'll mess with the tone on many occasions, depending on the solo, but my drive gain here and my, my level rarely change. Uh, gain is pretty much always set to about 10 o'clock and my level is pretty much up the middle at all times. But like I previously said, if I'm not soloing, this pedal is turned off. Uh, so let's kill those right now. Uh, next we have a flanger. Now this particular flanger uh, modeler is based off the vintage 70s ADA flanger model, which was one of the more uh, popular flangers of the day. I'll only kick this on when I need it, but uh, in the early and mid 80s, Alex had a couple of flanger heavy solos to use quite a bit of flanger. Uh, so I needed to use this one in a couple of solos already. On this particular flanger, I'll keep the speed and the delay pretty much set at, uh, at zero or one, right down here at about seven o'clock. 
with the other parameters set to about 10 o'clock or so. This seems to give me uh, about the best flange effect for soloing. And this little harmony odd even I keep down here on odd. Uh, onto the amps. Uh, I have two amps in my preset. Uh, an amp modeled on the Marshall JCM 800 on top and a Marshall Plexi on the bottom. Now the 800 has, is a higher gain amp than the Plexi, so I'll keep the gain on uh, that one set at about uh, 5 or 6 with the volume on 10, the master volume, while I have the gain on the Plexi set at about two notches higher on about 7 or 8. But you know, I will adjust these accordingly depending on the track. Uh, all other parameters, bass, mids, treble, presence, I'll start at noon and I'll work from there as I'm dialing in the tone. Uh, for soloing, you pretty much always want to enhance the mids so the solo doesn't get lost in the mix. So I'll usually start with the mids first uh, on both amps and set them to about 3 o'clock and then play with the other uh, parameters accordingly. Uh, 4x12 cabs with each uh, amp mic placement on both set right in the middle to start but again I will move these around uh, accordingly to adjust highs and lows if need be. Uh, up next we have our 10 band EQ and it's here for the most part where I'll head when it comes to adding or removing highs and lows. Now this is my bass setup, uh, bass setting uh, pretty much even across the board with just a slight boost uh, to the highs by uh, two or three decibels on the final three channels. Uh, again, I'll tinker with the EQ relentlessly sometimes. Now onto the uh, ever present chorus. Uh, this particular chorus is modeled on the classic MXR stereo chorus and is my favorite chorus within bias effects. I pretty much always have this on with, with these settings locked in. Uh, width and uh, intensity set basically at 7 o'clock and the rate turned basically down to zero. Set as such, it doesn't give you a noticeable chorus effect, but it does markedly smooth out your overall tone. Now, in the late 70s and early 80s, Alex was somewhat obsessed with chorus and he used it a lot. Uh, his guitar tone on hemispheres, permanent waves, moving pictures was noticeably heavy on the chorus. Uh, for any of these particular tracks from those albums that are heavy on the chorus, I will boost all of these parameters up. Uh, a few notches so you can really hear you know the the chorus do its lovely chorusy thing uh, so anyway good then that's it for the chorus now uh, delay this delay modeler is based on the Boss DD3 if I'm not mistaken and it's my favorite delay to use within bias effects uh, again all of these settings will change from solo to solo but my core setting uh, I usually start off at a core setting at about 600 milliseconds of delay time with three or four repeats in the mix at about 60%. Always a good starting point. It's a great delay setting for Alex Lifeson soloing. Uh, Alex tended to offer longer delay times than uh, a lot of other guitar players, I think. Uh, however, with that said, it's not set in stone and I'll often uh, dial the delay back to like uh, 380 or 320 or so or anywhere in between sometimes. Now, as with compression and boost uh, delay goes off uh, for most rhythm parts that I'm playing or you know I'll, I'll occasionally leave it on dial way back to like 270 280 milliseconds for a short delay for rhythm playing but I, I usually just turn it off and uh, finally we have reverb uh, I like this particular reverb in bias effects too it's this big rack mounted modeler of a vintage reverb unit uh, on this particular reverb there are really only two parameters that I touch uh, the type of reverb right here and uh, the wet dry mix how much reverb all these knobs in the middle here pretty much stay at 12 o'clock at all times like low frequency high frequency you know diffusion level uh, I like to use plate reverb uh, pretty much all of the time it's the most echo heavy and cavernous of all the reverb types so one has to be careful not to overdo it and, and have the guitar get lost in the mix with too much reverb uh, for rhythm parts I keep the wet dry down to quite low, 8 to 10 percent, not much. Uh, however, with solos, I like to boost it anywhere between maybe, maybe 10 to 15, 18, somewhere in that area. Uh, rarely higher than that. Uh, that's usually plenty of reverb, especially with plate. Uh, and there you have it, uh, a walkthrough of my Alex Lifeson signal chain in Bias FX2, uh, used for pretty much all of my rush tones from the 70s and 80s. Uh, certainly hope you found that helpful. If you uh, 
happen to use Bias FX2 as well, or just, you know, in a general sense, if you're looking to replicate some of Alex Lifeson's more famous guitar tones through the years. Uh, I found it to be a, a fantastic a core signal chain for getting started with uh, Lifeson's early tones. Well, that's it for now. Day 9 here on 30 Days of Lurks. If you enjoyed this video and it uh, maybe helped you out in any way, please hit that like button as it helps the YouTube algorithm, I suppose. Uh, I don't get a whole lot of help from the algorithm. Uh, drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already, as that would be really cool. I uh, hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may find you. And don't forget to tune in tomorrow for day 10 of Alex Lifeson Month here on my channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers.